good morning and welcome back to the channel thank you so much for joining um okay so in today's video i'm going to be doing a coloring chat from mythomorphia by the fantastic kirby rosanis um this is a requested video by the beautiful lisa from lisa's coloring corner um and yeah she requested um for me to color from a kirby book using um crayola super tips with <clears throat> with pencils over the top um i did film a video really recently from the disney dreams collection by thomas kincaid using this same technique and um yeah it seems popular with um quite a few of you so if that is something that you would like to see more on the channel um then please feel free to let me know down below in the comments or you can drop me an email or DM me on Instagram. Um, but yeah, if there's a book in mind you would like to see me use the technique in, anything at all, then please feel free to let me know and I can make a note of that and get it filmed as soon as I can. Okay, so I do have two long-standing whips in this book. Um, the first one is this double page spread. This is a buddy colour with my beautiful best friend Tess. And um, yeah, I, I need to um, come back to this because I was really pleased with how it was turning out. Um, and a lot of the, the pencil work on this was with my prism colours. But the page I'm going to be working on today is this one. And this is the other whip from this book and this was a buddy colour with the lovely Penny um, she's otherwise known as Silver Mist on YouTube um, and uh, yeah this this was as far as I got I got so intimidated by the page but um, when I had the, the comment from Lisa asking me to do this I thought, oh, I've got a page in here. I've started with markers. I've not finished it. This is a good excuse to get this page done. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm going to try and aim a light here at the book. Let me see if I can. Um, I don't know if that's really made much of a difference. I'm not sure, but uh, we can try. Yeah, I don't think it's making a great deal of difference. I know this it's casting shadows, but I'm sat in front of a, um, a window as well, so I thought that might have helped, but we'll see. Okay, so because this is done already, I'm not really going to be working on the bits that have already got colour down. Um, so I'm just going to shift the book over a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to work on this bit, sort of colouring inside his mouth, his tongue, um, this sort of fin he's got here. And then we're going to base the boats with markers and maybe some of the water. And then I have something really exciting to show you. Okay. So I'm just zooming in. Um, let's see if I can move the camera a little bit. Give me two seconds just while I sort this out. <laughs> Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, I'm fighting with the uh, the gooseneck tripod that's here on the, the little desk. And um, yeah. <laughs> Merlin, you're going to have to sit over there, puppet. Good girl. Okay, so I'm just quickly going to colour his eye. So how are you all? How is everyone doing? I hope you're all doing well. 
I'm recording this on Tuesday the uh, 16th, yeah, tu yeah, I think it's Tuesday, this is Tuesday the 16th of March, oh my gosh, I'm getting my days all muddled. So how was your weekend? Did you get up to much? Ours was really busy on Saturday. We um we ended up moving all the furniture around in our bedroom. Um moving out a great big unit, moving in a chest of drawers that we were given, um, moving the bed. So yeah, that was like a, oh, it was a whole day thing. But before we even got started doing that, um, Aaron and I were awake super early. So we were up the park with the kids by eight o'clock Saturday morning. <laughs> so the the um the play park area is still not open to the public but you still get people in there which is a bit a bit naughty but you know whatever if they want to get in trouble that's up to them. Um but yeah we just we took them up the park on this uh little bike they take it in turns on and um yeah they loved it so we were up there for about an hour and then this huge great big black cloud started coming over and it was forecast to rain on saturday anyway so it was like right okay guys we need to start heading back before it starts raining um and luckily we got home in time we got home in time i think we were in about 15 minutes before it really started you know raining really heavy so we were lucky um oh my goodness excuse me yeah so we we managed to get home in time and then um sorry i'm just thinking what i'm gonna do with I think I'm going to do these green um, yeah so we, we managed to get hold oh my goodness we managed to get home in time <laughs> before um, yeah before it started raining which was great um, and then um yeah, we started moving our room around about, I don't know, about half an hour after we got back. Um, and we didn't end up stopping until about half eight, nine o'clock Saturday night. So it was a really, really long day, but very productive. We got a lot done. Um, so I think Aaron and I both felt better for, you know, getting the bedroom Get the bedroom sorted. Um, and then Sunday. Oh my goodness, guys. I was hurting in places I didn't even know I had. <laughs> so it just goes to show, oh my gosh, how out of shape I am. It's ridiculous. I am ridiculously out of shape. Not that I was ever in shape, but, you know, <laughs> I was hurting and my arthritis had been kicking off anyway. Um, I've, I've been having a flare up with that. Um, so, yeah, everything's just been really, really sore and my feet are so ridiculously swollen it's, oh, it's a whole thing, you know. Um, I'm 
just trying to see where these bits on this guy go. Because oh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Um it looks like this is supposed to sort of come up. There. Yeah, hopefully that's right. Um yeah, so it was, you know, it was <laughs> it was non-stop. Um but I've been in an extreme amount of pain with my jaw the last couple of days. And I'm due some more medication anyway, so um, Aaron's going to help me this morning do a um, like an email medication request. So he's going to help me do that this morning and get that submitted for the doctors to look at. So hopefully. I'll be able to get some pain relief soon. But apart from that, we're all okay. Um, the kids had a good first week back at school. Um, the situation with Tegan sort of being bullied by these girls. Um, the school sorted that pretty quickly, so that's good. If you guys have any children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, you, you know the drill. Um, you know, parents, guardians, carers of uh, children of school age um, in the UK and they've been back to school they've returned to school recently how have they found it? I think uh, if I'm being honest I think the little ones probably found it easier than what Tegan did um, but <clears throat> You know, she had she had a lot going on. So, oh, some of this, I'm, I don't know sort of what some of these bits are. So I'm just avoiding that for a minute and just colouring the bits that I think I know what they are. <laughs> and just hope for the best. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, and you may notice as well that I have not put a blotter page behind. I always say to, to do that. But I just wanted to show that using the super tips on Kirby Rosanas' book. This is the next image. And as you can see, there's no bleed through, no ghosting or anything. So I just wanted to show you guys that, you know, if you're mindful with your... With your super tips, you'll you'll be good. You'll be fine. And Link is just having a stretch across the book, aren't you? Hmm. Wait. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I just wanted to show that, um, you know, if you're if you're careful with your markers and don't keep going over the same area, then you will be fine on this paper. If you, of course, don't feel confident to not have a blotter page, then absolutely put one in. Normally I would, but I wanted to sort of just, you know, be like, Look, I don't have a blotter page. Um, it was a bit of an accident. But 
only because I didn't I didn't uh, have one handy, and I thought I'll I'll just we'll go for it, and then I can show you that the markers don't bleed if you're careful. But I do just want to be mindful here of the edge. I don't want to get the green on the next page. So I'm just lifting that up a little bit and just running my marker along the edge there, like that. Okay. And then, because these are quite large areas to colour, you may notice that I'm just sort of outlining the section first. And then I'm following the lines of Kirby's artwork um, to use as a guide to help me section off areas to colour. So, for example, we've got the lines sort of running down here on the gills. So what I will do is use my super tip. Come along here. And then And then just start back here at the top and just <laughs> hey Merlin <laughs> hey mummy's trying to come here excuse me Gonna go sit in the window. Good girl. We're gonna have a, a lot of cat interventions this morning with Link and Merlin. I can just, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's. I think this is a really really wonderful way to colour your pages. Um, you know, if, if like me, you suffer with dexterity issues, you know, arthritis, anything at all that, attack, uh, that, um, affects your fine motor skills, um, then, you know, this might be a good way for you to colour without, um, being worried about putting too much pressure and strain on your hands from using coloured pencils. Um, and also, it's quicker. It's quicker as well because by using markers as a base or even like your watercolours, ink tents, pastels, anything like that where you're putting a base of colour down and then just going in and sort of shading over the top and adding embellishments and stuff. You're taking a lot of strain off your hands and you're also saving a lot of time which is great and um, yeah I'm really I'm, I'm grateful to Lisa for uh, asking me to colour in a cabby book using this technique because it's uh, it's made me feel good actually about pulling out this page and completing it whereas I sort of I got scared off before and it'll be so lovely to finally say to Penny, look, the buddy colour we started like forever ago. I have finally finished it. I'm so sorry it took me so long. So yeah, it'll be it'll be really nice to have this finished. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the sky yet. I think that'll probably be like a, a posca or something like that. Um Let's see here. Okay, so um, if I okay, I will have to sort of figure out these bits later, but that's that's perfectly fine. That is not a problem. I think this is this section here. I think that is supposed to be with these. So 
I will go in and grab a marker on that. think of how I was how I figured this out a minute ago when I was like right okay that's the bits I need to cover so what are you all working on at the moment are you coloring diamond painting cross stitching scrapbooking I know so many of you have got you know different um different hobbies and I think that's so nice you know to have to have that variety I think it's lovely so some of these bits like these water splashes and things I will um go around them with like a white a white gel pen just to get rid of the lines hi link <laughs> yeah just to just to get rid of whoops just to get rid of the lines and um really give that kind of like sea foam effect if i can We'll see, see how that goes. <laughs> I've been really enjoying watching everyone's videos recently. That's been lovely. Um, I do have quite a few I still need to catch up on. But I'm pretty much, pretty much there. So again, I'm just going to lift the page a bit just to get here. And here. Okay. So if this is something you would like to uh, see me work on a bit more on camera with you, let me know. Um, I may work on it a little bit off camera, but um, yeah, if you want to see me work more on this page, then let me know. Let me know and I can absolutely do that for you. I've just been enjoying um, like taking my time with pages this month not not feeling the need to rush or to pressure myself into completing pages um you know anything like that i've just been coloring what i want um and just taking my time i've been doing a lot of pencil work which has been lovely it's been really nice um and as always you know plenty of mixed media as well which i love so, yeah, it's, it's been good and I'm pleased with, um, I'm pleased with what I've coloured so far. I completed a page out of Carla Magana's new colouring book, Hot Tropics, yesterday. I was so pleased with how that page came out. So pleased. So... Yeah, that was really nice. Sometimes it's just nice, isn't it, to really have a, a sense of accomplishment when you finish a page, and especially if it's a page that you're really thrilled with. It's such a nice feeling. I love it. 
So as you can see, I'm still just trying to use these lines as a as a bit of a guide, just to section up the areas I want to colour. So as I mentioned in the um, the colouring chat, where I was colouring from the Disney Dreams collection, Thomas Kincaid book. I was working on the Tweedledee and Tweedledum page with Crayola Super Tips and showing you shading over the top and things. I was showing you how I use the Crayola Super Tips so that the streaks don't look so bad. Um, so if you missed this video, if you missed that video, then all I do on the Crayola Super Tips, so they've got the like the cone shaped tip. So where you've got this side here, here, the slanted side of the nib, I have that against the page. And if I just section off the area I want to work in, like I have been doing here, um, and then just keep the pen moving, and sort of just, you know, keep it going, keep it steady. As you can see, the streaks actually, they're not too bad. They're not too bad. Um, so I'm making the areas so that I don't sort of have to colour a section like this and then come back underneath and then start again like that. Because then where those two layers of marker meet and they overlap a little bit, that is what's going to give you quite a lot of streaking as well. Whereas if you do it like this, so again, I've got that sort of that side part of the marker nib against the paper and I'm just running that up and down in that area that I've sectioned off by outlining it. There you go. So it's just a little, you know, a little idea to help you if, if that's something that you struggle with. It was so nice because I had a few comments from people saying, you know, I had pretty much given up on super tips. Um, and, you know, they they struggled to sort of make them work for them. But after watching that video, they were going to pull out their super tips and give it a go. Um, and that was just so nice to hear that you know, people were like, just, you know, yeah, we can make them work for us. That's, you know, and, and be excited about it. That just made me so happy. It was, it was really lovely to hear. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was really, really lovely. So I'm just going to finish off this sort of fin here. I don't know what I would call it, a fin? It's not a gill, is it? I, oh, I don't know. So, I'll just get this bit finished. And then I'm going to show you some shading, but on the lighter area that was already coloured. Hi everyone. Okay, welcome back. Um, this is now a few days later. And <clears throat> I'm going to be continuing on um, showing you how I um, shade over Crayola Super Tips. Um, Again, continuing on the whip that I was working on in Mythomorphia by Kirby Rosanes. So you may recall in the first part of this video, um, I was using my super tips to sort of work on this part here of the sea serpent. 
um, I did do a little bit of shading here just off camera um, I just wanted to make sure that the materials that I had pulled out um, not the materials sorry the colours that I had pulled out I just wanted to make sure that they would work on top of this and they do it's all good so the surprise uh, medium that I'm going to be shading this page with is drum roll are you ready <laughs> Crayola twistable crayons um so these were um from a set that my youngest got for Christmas so I'm just borrowing a few for a minute until I um until I get a, a replacement set of my own um but these are fantastic and as you can see you can sharpen them they are completely you know completely um able to be sharpened and I first saw this trick a few years ago on um, Anne at A Colourful Life um, she used this trick on her channel and I just thought oh my gosh that looks fantastic because as many of you know with Crayola Twistable Crayons when you get them the tops are just sort of like really chunky and rounded they don't have a point on them so if you do this with just a you know a basic sharpener you can taper them down into a really nice point and that gives you a lot more control so let's just twist that down a little bit so I just want to show how you can create a really really lovely page really nice shading using budget supplies or things that you know like this that your kids might have laying around so I'm just going to go in and sort of show you and the nice thing with these is that you don't have to push heavy at all to get a really really nice layer of pigment coming down so um yeah when i when i paused the first video the house was sort of getting a bit noisy and i thought right okay we'll just we'll leave it here and i'll come back and show you this next step um and that was like i want to say two three days ago so yeah <laughs> but thank heavens i am um, i'm able to sort of you know, I know how to merge two videos together now, to clip them together. So I'm just, you know, not being too fussy, but just working as I would, you know, with, with coloured pencils. Um, okay, no, I do want that medium. So I hope you're all doing well today and that your week is going good. It is Friday tomorrow. <sighs> so do you have anything nice planned for the weekend? I don't really think we've got plans as such. Um, a lot of it, I guess, will just depend on the weather. Um... So as you can see, just using some of these twistable crayons and you can still get a really, really lovely, lovely blend with them. So I just think it's really nice to show that you do not need expensive supplies to, you know, to create a really, really lovely page in your colouring books. It's just not, it's not necessary. So I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit. I'm getting a little bit closer and then you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm going to just move the book over a touch because I've got <laughs> Merling right here 
in front of me in the windowsill, Merlin and Link, but she's kind of more so on the on the desk in front of me. So I'll just shift the book over a smidge. Bless me, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> A really tickling nose. So, as you can see, where Kirby has put these sort of sketchy lines, um, I guess to maybe indicate where some darker shading would be, would be. That's exactly where I'm putting the darkest orange in the Crayola Twistables. So I'm just sort of following Kirby's guideline here. And see what we can do. This isn't going to be a very long uh, portion of video because Aaron will be home with the kids in a minute but I just wanted to get the second part of this done sort of showing you where I'm shading with the Crayola Twistables just to give you a rough idea but if this is something you would like to see me do again in the future, then let me know. Let me know, because I must admit, I'm uh, I'm really having a good time <laughs> with these. And um, crayons are something that I really do think I want to kind of just explore a little bit more in colouring books. So... That is definitely something I'm looking at and um, I have my eye on some watercolour palettes as well. I'm, I'm really loving watercolours and, you know, sort of my Neo 2s and all that good stuff. So, I do think... <laughs> Get out of it. I do think... Um, water mediums are going to be something that I'm using on a more regular basis. I, I've always loved them but I'm just, I'm kind of getting a bit more confident I think with them now. Well, maybe confidence is the wrong word. Um, I'm just you know learning I think and kind of um, just working with them better you know sort of becoming more that's it becoming more familiar with them this cat is going absolutely bonkers on the desk right in front of me <laughs> Uh, I don't know how she gets her energy from sometimes. But if you want to see me use this technique, like I said, um, in a future video, let me know. Maybe we could try it in, um, you know, one of our more sort of higher end books. Maybe a hardback book, a Maria Trolle or something like that. That might be quite fun. I put too much of that dark and went on. That's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to try and get... a nice blend here.
so yeah definitely um sharpening these twistable crayons it does give you a lot more control so yeah i am um, I need to thank Anne at A Colourful Life for that. I saw her do that on her channel years ago. Okay. And then I'll just colour a few more just over, whoops. Just sort of over here. We'll just do a few of these. So I'm just putting the darker orange where the more sketchy lines are closer together as an indication of like the darker, you know, sort of like the darker shading if you like. Burning. <laughs> it's a budge up. Budge up. Good girl. Okay. So like I said, it just kind of gives you a rough idea. these <clears throat> I think it's fun isn't it to see um, either what mediums you have that you haven't used for a long time or you know if you have kids or grandkids and they've got a colouring box or something then you know go through that and see what they have <laughs> see if you can you know do something with their supplies maybe it's something you haven't tried before you know, have fun. the next darkest orange I'm just working in you know and sort of overlapping it a little bit as we would if we were blending pencils so I'm just using that same you know that same method to blend these together So we're getting there, aren't we? I wonder if you guessed <laughs> that these were going to be the, the surprise medium that I was going to, to use on this page. Let me know down in the comments. What did you guess? <laughs> did you guess right or did you guess something different? No, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and uh, if you guessed correctly okay so 
room with the next oops, next lightest colour now. And then I'm just going to go in with our lightest, which is this beautiful, vibrant yellow. And just put this gorgeous colour on the ends. I do think I've added a bit too much of the oranges, but that's all right. So there you go. So you can see the difference. Just having a, a layer of marker down here. And then the shading over the top with the Crayola Twistable Crayons. So, there you go. I will uh, work on that off screen. But, like I said, I just wanted to give you an idea, you know, of what you can achieve with, you know, a, a budget-friendly supply. And I'm just, I'm looking here and it actually doesn't look too bad doesn't look too bad on the paper at all so there you go I hope you've enjoyed um, this sort of little snippet of part two um, and just sort of see you know how you can take something as basic as a twistable crayon if you don't have the twistables that's fine a regular crayon is you know perfectly fine um, and it's just, it's another option, you know, it's another option for shading. So there you go. I hope this has been helpful. Enjoy, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Lots of love. Bye. <laughs>